Uh, hello, my name is Manjari Dege from University of Washington in Seattle, and my lecture topic today is fetal and postnatal urinary tract dilatation. So my objectives for this lecture today are to cover the normal anatomy of the fetal urinary system and its appearance on ultrasound and MRI, the postnatal anatomy of the urinary system and the appearance of, on different modalities. I'll talk a little about etiology and some cases of antenatal hydronephrosis and some of their postnatal correlation. We will then discuss the description of new urinary tract dilatation classification, which is called as a UTD classification, and then the management and follow-up options in antenatal and postnatal UTD. So in terms of antenatal ultrasound anatomy, the kidneys are seen at about 10 to 12 weeks but by transvaginal ultrasound only. So this picture here shows the kidneys in this fetus bilaterally and on a sagittal or a coronal reformatted image from a 3D image, again, you can see the kidneys on both sides. Normograms for the renal length, width and thickness as well as volume exist. But in clinical practice, we don't actually use normograms. We just use an approximate rule of renal length is equal to fetal age in weeks. So in this image, you can see an ultrasound image in a sagittal orientation showing the left kidney, and it measures 32 millimeters in a fetus who is 32 weeks in gestational age. As a, a, a gestation progresses, the kidneys are seen as bilateral hypoechoic round structures on either side of the fetal spine. And in third trimesters, you can actually see the medullary pyramids and cortex as separate entities as seen in this case. The ureters are not usually visible unless they are dilated when they are seen as these tubular linear fluid filled avascular structures. The bladder is seen as a round anechoic fluid filled structure in the pelvis with the umbilical arteries seen on either side of the bladder. In terms of MRI, the signal intensity on titubated images, ADC values and renal cortex and medulla the ratio increases with gestational age and reaches maximum at term. Both kidneys are seen bilaterally in this T2-weighted coronal image with the renal pelvis seen as a fluid-filled structure. The bladder is seen as a fluid-filled structure in the pelvis. Now, antenatal hydronephrosis is one of the commonest abnormalities seen on prenatal ultrasound. It is seen in 1-5% to of pregnancies it can be transient or physiologic and has no clinical significance. The definition of ANH is variable and clinical management is not systematically defined. Hence, the diagnosis of ANH can cause significant parental anxiety and physician uncertainty when it comes to pre and postnatal management. 